So today we have a little bit of a different format. Most of the time we're spending uh, working in, on technique, but today we're going to talk a little bit about a very important topic, uh, which is injuries. And we've got a little bit of a different format. So we're working here with uh, Sensation Taro Higashi. Of course, most of you know him already, but if not, then there are several links down below where you can check out some of the things that he's been working on. Thank you for being here. Of course, thank you. Thank you um, and of course, you can see that we've got, you can, his injury is not quite as obvious and this is less of an injury. We'll talk about it, but you can yeah. see that I've you know, got my own stuff going on. So um, injuries, especially for people who are um, a little bit older and working with younger people um, are a perpetual source of concern. And um, even if not, you know, if you're just in a training environment, you're training hard, you know, we're not, we're not playing marbles here. We're get, you know, we're, there's a lot of physical contact. And so the expectation is that you will have at some point in the course of your training, have to deal with getting injured. And one of the first big goals that you should have in terms of your, you know, deal, having to deal with injuries is make sure you're not dealing with some kind of crazy catastrophic injury that's yeah. easily pre preventable. Um, a lot of that comes down to the training environment that you're in, making sure that there are not any, um, you're not taking unnecessary risks. And the things in whatever you're doing, if you're doing judo, or if you're doing jujitsu, that the things that are the most dangerous are well regulated and they're basically kept out of the training environment. You know, there's like a whole host of things where it's like, oh, this technique is illegal now and this technique is illegal now. And yeah. it's less important to me if it's illegal. It's more important if it is going to injure you. And, and, you know, so if we have something that's illegal, but it's not likely to injure somebody, it's not that big a deal. But if you do have a technique that's like so-called illegal um, and it's, it has a great injury potential, then yeah. it's, it might be illegal for a reason. I know there are a lot yeah. of techniques in judo like that yeah. now, right? Yeah. What are a few of them that, that people... Uh, well, Kani Masami is just straight up illegal in competition right. and in training. You know, uh, maybe like a jumping guard, that's legal. Right. right? In but, in, but, but dangerous. Yeah. But in the room, a lot of people say no jumping guard, yeah. right? So, yeah. 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 And you have other... I mean, uh, Korean Seinagi, right? Korean Seinagi is not illegal. A lot of people have blown their elbows out. You yeah. know, head dive Uchimata for neck injury, head injury. Yeah. They ban, ban that. You know, for good reason. Right. They don't want kids doing it and breaking their necks. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And you have things, you know, when people are working no gi, of course, you know, many of you who are watching probably have no gi um, as part of your training. But, you know, there are attacks you can do that look dangerous, you know, heel hook attacks and spinning, spinning leg attacks and knee bars and toe holds and stuff like that, that when done, under the right conditions with the right sort of person and in a good training environment, the likelihood of injury, there's still one there, but it's not, uh, the, the likelihood of a catastrophic injury is not so great because you're working in a regulated environment. So yeah. I think when it comes to injuries, w your main objective in training should be to try to avoid some of those unnecessary catastrophic injuries. But we wanted to talk a little bit today about what to do when you do get injured. And um, right now, Sensei, what do you have going on? You've got a- Well, you know, I got a little foot thing here, right? As you can tell, it's a little bit, you know, black and purple, took a nice shot to the ankle, you know, and I've been limping, you know, like last Monday, I'm still hurting. It's like a week and a half, yep. you know, and it's bad enough where I don't want to call it an injury, right? There's a difference between getting hurt and then being injured. Mm. I don't want to call it an injury, but it's right on that cusp because for a couple of days, I couldn't walk, you know, and then it blew up like crazy on the, over the weekend. I tried to train through it and now I'm at a point where I'm like over the initial denial phase and I'm like, <laughs> all right, I got to make the rest of this thing. Yeah. And you saw me wear my shin pad today. Yep. You know? Yeah. 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 And we both have shoulder issues, you know, varying degrees. And if you do martial arts for any length of time, or if you do it consistently, you're going to get banged up. Um, I think that's an important distinction. You're talking about the difference between being hurt and being injured. Mm -hmm. When you talk about that, what do you mean? So like getting kicked in the shin, generally, you, you're a little hurt, right? Injured is like broken foot, broken leg. You can't really treat... You know, it's, it's a little bit more serious, right? So it's like on yeah. a scale. Yeah. You know, like one to ten. Ten is like, you know, you're dead. <laughs> right. One is like, oh, a little paper cut. You know, and there's the spectrum of all the stuff in between. Yeah. You know, you have to kind of be able to identify and see what it is, you know, for what it is. I think this is a nice distinction because there are a lot of times where we'll work around being hurt. You know, we will make adjustments to being hurt and we can continue more or less at the same pace and the same kind of approach that we usually use. And if you're, you know, you're hurt, you maybe you, you are doing some sort of therapy, whether it's just ice or like something a little bit more involved so that you can reduce the amount of time that that, you know, that, that, that you're hurt, that you're uncomfortable versus an injury where like something is broken yeah. or yeah. there's, you need to take time to allow it to heal. And yeah. that's a much bigger deal, right? Yes, yes, yes. Um, 
I think that when we're talking about, you know, these, you know, injuries, a big question that people ask me, uh, either as students or people who are just, I'm sure, you know, you have the same experience, is what do you do when you get injured? You know, like what what sort of modifications do you need to make or do you need to modify or what do you change? And I think some of it depends on the nature of what's going on because there are some things that you can work around, some things you can't. If you yeah. have uh, two broken ribs, well, it's going to be tough. There are going to be a lot of things that you can't do. Yes. Um, but if you have... I don't know, you know, if you've got shoulder arthritis or something else that's going on, that might be an injury where you don't do quite the same things that you were doing with your left arm, but yeah. you can make some modifications. Yeah. Um, what's something that you're doing now with this injury, uh, this issue with your leg that is like a modification to your training? Like what's an example of that? So I put my shin guard, you know, on my leg so no one can kick it. And I put it over the pant leg so that it's much more visual. Sometimes you put like a knee sleeve on under your gi People don't see it like, hey, I'm nursing my knee. But if it looks like a gi pad, people are going to still go for it, right? <laughs> so I put like a knee pad over my gi pad so it's visual. And you tell them, hey, my knee's banged up. Like, mm -hmm. don't stay away from it. Don't heel hook it. So they have the visual cue. And they're much more, you know, likely to stay away from it, right? So I put my shin guard. Yeah. How about all, like all, do you, are you changing how you're training or alter, all, in terms of your techniques or your pace or anything? Yeah. If I'm going to do stand up today, I'm going to be much more aware of, you know, people who do Koichi to this leg, mm -hmm. I just won't go with that person. Or just be like, dude, don't do Koichi. But Judo's so reactionary, people are going to go for it anyway. Right. You know, so I'll, I'll avoid those guys. And maybe I'll do like a 20, 30% like sort of drilling like thing like we did today. We right. did hand fighting, mm -hmm. right? Instead of as opposed to like, I know you want to do hard Judo, right? I know you want the roll, but I was like, you know what? Today, let's just do a little bit of hand fighting and sort of wrestling. And that way, there's no risk of me getting blasted in the leg, right? And it was great. It was very fruitful. Yeah, it was Nice awesome. conversation, 20 minutes. <laughs> How was your weekend? <laughs> and I think this is really a very important point because um, sometimes we have this, like, I think people do have an all or nothing approach. Yeah. And it's like, if I'm showing up and I'm going to step on the mat, then it's got to be 100% or it's got to be whatever your 100% looks like. It's got to be 100% of that. And if you're not dying at the end of the training or you're not soaked in sweat, whatever the measure is that you usually use to determine if you've had good training, if you don't meet that, then it's not not real training. Mm. And as a result, I think a lot of times what people will do is they'll have an injury and they'll be like, you know what, I'm not gonna train at all because I can't train the way that I normally would. Mm. And they're reluctant or resistant to make that adjustment. So I think that that's a really critical point. If you're facing an injury, if you have an injury, if you don't have one now, you probably will have one in the future. Eventually. But um, learning that it's okay to modify the way that you normally train. And that doesn't just mean if your left arm is injured, you're favoring your right. That, that's a great thing. Mm -hmm. But as Sensei was saying, you know, sometimes if you know someone is really attacking, you know, someone who is a Koichigari specialist, you might need to say to that person, we're not training today. And I think that's a tough thing for people too, yes. like for the ego, because you yeah. don't want to be like, you don't want to be the person who's saying that you're, yeah. You don't want to admit yeah. that you're injured. You, yeah. you can't train. You want to like take yeah. on all comers. But... I also don't want to admit to the internet that I'm sitting out because somebody <laughs> kicked me in the shit. Right. But it was seriously like black and purple. Yeah. My whole leg swelled up. And I was like, oh my God, this could be potentially very serious. Yeah. Right? yeah. I was like, maybe my shin bone broke or something. Right. Not that bad. <laughs> right. So I don't want to admit that. You know? No, but we have, yeah. we have situations also. Like I had a situation that was not like an acute injury. Yeah. Uh, maybe like a couple of weeks ago where my knee blew up like a balloon. Oh, yeah. And it was, you know, it was bursitis, which is not anything super serious, mm -hmm. but it does affect how you train. It makes yeah. some things really difficult. Can't go to your knee. Can't go to your knee. Can't yeah. spend a lot of time on your knees passing the guard. Um, yeah. Wrestling is difficult. Uh, resisting yeah. throws is difficult. So there are definitely modifications you need to make. But then there are some people where you just need to say no to them. And this was a, this was a lesson that um, uh, Mr. Danaher instilled really early on uh, in in a lot of us. But I remember this like from when I was just getting started in jujitsu. It's like sometimes you have to say no. Yeah. Not everybody is the right person for you to train with at all times. Sure. Now, if you're totally injury free and you're totally feeling good, then yeah, you yeah. do what you want. Yeah. Um, but in those times where you're coming back from an injury and your goal is to get back to 100%, you don't want to take on yeah. just everybody, right? And even sometimes like when you're not injured and you feel great, some people, you're like, you know, this <laughs> right, guy, that's right, that's I've true. taken four knees from this guy. I've taken three elbows. Yeah. There comes one day, I'm like, you yeah. know what, man? I'm not working out with you. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. You know? yeah. 
Yeah. So there are some things that you can do. You know, there are a lot of, I'm, you know, obviously we're not doctors, so like <laughs> yeah. we don't, we're not going to be able to tell you what to do with specific injuries. Yeah. But in terms of training protocol, I think there are a couple of things that are coming out of this short conversation. You know, one of them is that you do need to take care of something if it's, uh, you know, a serious issue. If it's an injury, not just getting hurt, you know, your finger gets twisted, that that's you getting hurt. But if we're talking about like an injury that's lasting over a certain period of time, it's affecting how you walk or how you move or how you sleep or one of those things, you, you should modify what you're doing in order to be able to recover from that more fully before you go back to training. So I think that's one important point. Another important point is that sometimes you need to be able to say no. You need to be able to look around the room and be like, nah, you know, that person's not really right. Yeah. And if you're, if you're going to, maybe you're going to a comp class mm -hmm. instead of a, a, you know, just a regular general population class, maybe now is the time to ease back on that. And so yeah. you make those little adjustments and it's okay to say no for that period of time. Yeah. And I think the third big thing is, um, now I totally forgot what the third thing is, but I think I think not the, training at all. Yeah, watching. that's it. The, yeah. the third thing is that there are going to be times where it's better to show up and do what you can do than it is to do this kind of all or nothing thing where you're like, ah, you know, if I, yeah. you know, if I can't, if I can't train as hard as I want, then I'm just, you know, I'm just not going to do it. I'm going to wait until I'm a hundred percent. Or even not train at all and sit there and watch from a different perspective. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Say, hey, I'm going to build a profile on what Sensei Grit does all the different things that are unique to him, kind of like, not write it down, but like take a mental note, and then how is this guy doing it, how's that guy doing it? So now when you go back to training, you kind of have a better understanding of everyone's game. Yes. Because I'm so self-focused sometimes, self saturated I'm like, I'm thinking about me, my training, what I have to do, what I have to do. Rarely ever am I really thinking about the other person's game. Yeah. But if I'm sitting on the sidelines, that has nothing, nothing to do, but watch someone else and then kind of break their game down and analyze that. There okay. is a mental aspect to what we do you know um they're you know strategy tactics that those are things that when you're on the mat physically training you can't always see what other people are doing but when you do take a step back and you it, sometimes it can be because of an injury or it can be because of some other reason if you show up you come in a class or you, you you know you're you're on the training floor even if you're not suited up and you're taking a look at what other people are doing, you do start to see stuff. You start to see strategies people are using. You start to see grips people are using, things you didn't notice before. Mm -hmm. And, you know, obviously you don't need to wait to get injured to do that sort of thing. But also just don't overlook the, the fact that there is real value there. And if you're out for any length of time, sometimes that's all you can do. You know, if you have a real serious injury yeah. and you're looking at, a, a you know, a torn ligament or something that's going to keep you off the mat, if the choice is between not engaging with the martial arts, not engaging with jujitsu, yeah. not engaging with judo at all, yeah. or, you know, watching, learning, studying, um, coming in and just being part of the environment. I think the choice there is pretty obvious that you should be in and training and working on a mat. Yeah. You're off the mat for six, seven months and you don't have to be there. You pick up a new hobby, you know, like right knitting or something, you know, you just yeah. kind of get involved with something else. And now all of a sudden, when you want to come back, you're completely out of the game. It's like you're starting over and it's so difficult. That's to much harder. That. Yeah. yeah. You know, as opposed to you're there every day, you know what everyone else does. You feel like you just know more than everyone at that point too when you're coming back. Yep. Right? And then you do your modifications and then little by little, before you know it, you were better than you were before. I mean, right? Maybe. Yep. Right? Definitely possible. <laughs> That's my hope anyway. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully this was helpful to you. Like a couple of short pieces of advice or recommendations, but these are things that we use day to day or week to week or month to month when we're facing challenges. There are also things that, you know, people who are operating at very high levels uh, in, in, in judo and jiu-jitsu use as strategies to cope with injuries and making sure that they're able to stay engaged with what they're doing, even if they need to take time off the mat. Sensei, thank you so much. Thank you very much. We have some links down below if you want to find out a little bit more about what either of us have been up to. If you enjoyed this video and you're not yet subscribed, please subscribe. Uh, there'll be, of course, a link to Sensei's channel. Like I said, if you uh, are watching this, probably you are already subscribed to Sensei's channel. But in case not, um, there's a link down below. So thank you so much. We'll see you soon.